Hi, my name is Steve Faulkner. This is Real Magic Review, and today I'm going to be reviewing Principia by Harapan Ong. But first of all, a word from our sponsors. That'll be me then. Uh, if you're like me and you're constantly trying to up your game with a deck of cards, you want to be an expert, you don't just want to know a couple of tricks, you want to be really knowledgeable, then go and check out cardmagiccourse.com. It's my online resource. It is everything I know with a deck of cards. Uh, there's 180 plus videos on there and it's just had an overhaul. There's moves, theory, help with performance, and you can always email if there's something on there that you don't, uh, that you can't see, and I'll do what I can to create more content for you. So it's a really bespoke learning experience. Uh, so if you go through that from beginning to end, if you're a serious beginner or you're already established, you're going to know so much more than most people with a deck of cards. Uh, so cardmagiccourse.com, and there are a few free previews on there. If you go onto Card Controls Volume 2, you'll get a free preview of the spread cull. Uh, and one more thing, very important, please like and subscribe down there. Hit the bell so you'll get notifications and don't forget to look in the comments bit at the end. There'll be all the links and the info you need on the product and of course the card course. Here's the review. Okay, so a lot of people like this book. This is the best book, best-selling book that Vanish Link have ever produced, and they produced a lot of books, uh, showing that books is kind of, you know, it, they're not dead. Some people think, is it all about downloads and apps and all that? It's really, it's really, really not. Books are still massive, and and that's a good thing. Uh, so I'm not really going to look into whether this is good or not, because it's good. This is a great book. It, I, lo I love it. But we're going to look at why. What makes a book like this so good and just hit a chord with so many people. So first of all, this is a book that feels and looks a bit different, which for those geeky, anally retentive people like me, when you look at your shelf, you're gonna go, well, where's it gonna go? Where are the other 20 books that look the same that I can line it up next to? Um, but it does have a different feel to it, and it's kind of got this squidginess to it. You can nearly get away with using it as a close-up pad. I've tried, you can't. Uh, well, maybe you can if you're better than me. Um, but it is a, it's a handsome piece, this is, and and, <laughs> I sounded wrong, didn't it? Uh, and for those of you know that that's important, it's important for a lot of us that you feel like you're getting a sturdy bit of work there, uh, which is good. It's, it's beautiful. He's based this on, uh, now Harapan is a physicist, easy for me to say with a lisp, sorry, I have to wipe the lens clean there. Um, but this is, um, it's, it's Principia is based on a Newton, an Isaac Newton thing. I think I've got that right, yes I have. Uh, an Isaac Newton thing, again, showing my uh, lack of education in such things. Sorry, Harapan. Um, but it's it, the, 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 the outlay of the book is he's used the, the model of an academic paper. So, you know, when you get an ap academic paper, you get the abstract, which is a kind of the introduction to the whole thing. And then it goes into the results, the conclusion. He's really broken it down. And, and, and we'll go into why that's a good thing in a minute. But all I'll say is that, that it's not as dry as it sounds. And if you've read some academic papers like I have, some of them can be a bit tedious. And that is not the case with this. So even, even though he's coming uh, from it, from an academic point of view, this is not, the, the style of it is only in those, those little bits, in those subtitles really. It's not a big, dense kind of something you're going to lose the will to live um, while getting halfway through it, like I have with many academic papers. So so it's uh, very accessible, that's all I'm going to say, it's not too heavy, uh, and there's a really good reason why he's done this, which I think is really satisfying, which I'll go into, like I say, a little bit later. So so there's a lot to say about this, and I'm going to break my rule, I've got the book in front of me, because I, I, I don't want to kind of miss anything, and don't worry, I'm not going to go through every effect, but let's just say this is a book of card effects, and there's a lot covered, and I, I want to kind of I want to give it credit where where credit's due. So so first of all, the first the first thing is this um, classical mechanics, and it's looking at classical plots but done in a slightly different way. Now, of course, we all talk about the, the sort of reinventing the wheel kind of thing, especially when you're looking at triumphs and things like that. Uh, and and this the the way this academic paper idea works is that at the end he he highlights Harapan highlights the the flaws in the trick and and maybe the next step. So. So even if something's a work in progress, it's kind of saying, well, maybe we could we could look at eradicating this issue. So it, again, it's not this kind of thing of this is going to be worker and going to absolutely floor people, even though a lot of them will. It's kind of saying that, yeah, it's great, but there are still these things we can iron out here. And that is what I like about this sort of academic approach, is that it's kind of like a scientific approach where it's okay that I get proven wrong and you find better ways of doing this. This is just an idea. Um, and then look at let's look at how we can develop and, and, and adapt this principle, which is 
a lot of books don't do that so straight away you're getting a lot more bang for your buck i think in this um so within that we've got you know there's stuff like that there's easy stuff like the, this idea of expanding the poker players picnic which makes it a bit less hands-off but adds another dimension to it which is really good it's got a beautiful triumph uh, which I'm going to be looking at. It's got a, a, a me elevator, which is an elevator routine, which I've been doing, um, which is, again, not over-challenging. Daily's Last Sandwiches, which is different ways of doing Dr. Daily's Last Trick. Twisting the Aces, you know, all these things that we know as classics. Um, he, he, he'll he re rejig, and some of them are improvements. I think some of them are. They, they, they do streamline it, and they do... They do improve on what's already been there or give us an, an, an alternative way of, of presenting them. And then we've got this condensed matter, which is just sort of slightly more unusual tricks using props and gaffs. Um, I, it opens with this, uh, this, this inset, inset sound, oh God, sorry, Sam Reception, this Inception idea, if you've seen the movie Inception, where he uses mini cards and, and a standard size card with this really what he calls an eye popping ending, which which when you see it, you just go, oh, God, that's so good. Which meant that I went and bought, you know, four packets or three packets of, of, of miniature cards. And then later on, he's got a thing with, with this jumbo stuff. So Jay Sankey uh, has got this, this gimmick called Bigger Finish, and he's got a trick using that. And I was gutted because he can't, I can't find it anywhere. So if anybody knows where to find Bigger Finish uh, there. So, so really unusual plots, but, but some of the most visual. And I, when I say visual, I know all magic is visual, but... Visualizing, you could just put music over it and watch it, and it would be, it would be like, whoa, you know, that looks really good, and and that sort of carried on. He's even got a little bit where he's got three, I think it's only three, three tricks where that are so visual that they work brilliantly for Instagram and things like that. So stuff that takes a bit of setup. He's also got the um, particle physics, which is this with packet tricks, a lot of stuff with pa packet tricks. Uh, I will say a couple of good things about this is that you get a majority of the gimmicks you're going to use, and there is a. a, a, a whole chapter using gimmicks you get with it you get a little packet of gimmick cards which is important because some of the double faces and stuff will be unlike the standard ones you get in a lot of packs he's even got this really good um bit on you know like when you buy custom decks and you get a double backer and you get a blank face deck and the two instruction cards he's got tricks that use just them packet tricks that use them so the ones that you usually throw away uh, which he calls throwaway tricks um uh, but but there's this where's that trick the yeah yeah he's got this um this trick using just the band one direction as a gag at the end you know what i mean so it's the the reason i'm talking you through all these isn't to i mean there's, there's loads of stuff in it but it's to actually give you an idea of the variety of stuff so for me the main variety was in the fact that he, he, i'm a big fan of kind of slightly flourishy tricks not over flourishy but tricks that just look a bit cool and a bit quick and there's loads of that in there and i think that's where we get into what is a what what people appreciate about Harapan's magic is that it, it it there's a fine line between flourishy and magical and I think he walks that really well I think he, the way he presents it is very kind of straightforward um but in it, the, the magic speaks for itself it's that impressive and I think it's a bit like Shim Lim where it's still very magical but a bit flourishy and a bit kind of cool as well and 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 that's what i mean by this sort of visual element i think there's a lot there's a lot in that um but okay that's a that's an idea of some of the tricks but that i didn't see that much where i kind of went mm, maybe a couple of the kind of visual ones that, that made the, this frog prince thing which wouldn't really suit me in the optics bit um but i could see where he's coming from but and a nice way of of kind of uh an alternative to the eight ball production using a chess piece which I really, really liked. So, so that'll give you a kind of overview of the kind of style. Like, there's so many I want, I'm, I want to mention, but I'm not this this, this trick. Oh, I'm mentioning it. I'm lying, aren't I? There's um, with best name trick ever that escalated quickly, which is just this whole production of a of an ace to ten uh, of one suit, and I just think it's stunning. And it uses one of my favourite uh, flourishes kind of uh, moves, which is this uh, the the oh my god, I can't even remember it. Not the pop-out move, the... Sorry. God, I'll write it down there. Uh, but anyway, not the Pete Thornton pop-out move, but he does have a good a good thing with that in it as well. So I'm blabbering a bit, but but the the my favourite bit, I think, was the essays at the end. Now, I'm a, I'm a, even though I'm a, a move monkey, which is why, again, this book's so good, I love theory. And I think after all that, you know, if you read this from beginning to end like I did, um, you get all these tricks and then you get this 
these essays which kind of not justify the tricks but look into its thinking and make you think and I think it was a real breath of fresh air. So there's a lot on improvisation, there's a lot on the trick, the, the, the trick that can't be named, um, there's a lot on the there's an essay on the three different endings of a trick that the way you, that trick can have, have no ending and you can improvise it where it can have a fixed ending or there can be two outs or, and the idea of outs and, and how that works and where that's strong where it's weak and and etc but what i really liked was this this almost this this championing of the what has been called and and this is quoting from the essay you know he, he talks about when he was at a, a lecture and someone's got up and said, oh, it's just magic masturbation or whatever. And it's kind of this, this kind of geeky flourishing, sitting at home learning all this, this stuff, which I've always loved, that's kind of poo-pooed a little bit by the professionals. And actually, you know, his, his thing is that, well, you know, you look at it again like a scientist. You know, we need the people that are going to sit there and geek out and give us the material, give us the, the raw materials to work with. And actually, that is where most magic does come from. It comes from the people sitting in the rooms, working out the stuff and working through through the through the the sort of minutiae of magic and and learning for learning's sake and actually that's what i think that the happiness and the joy of magic comes from that thing of learning for learning's sake and i've talked about this before of of actually looking at all this stuff and not worrying too much of how practical it is in the real world you know we'll get to that but we get to that through experimentation which goes on to this other essay he's got which i love this idea of this this bottom-up way of thinking, whereas we, you know, the, the standard way of thinking about creating magic is that you come up with the perfect effect. You know, you think, I want to achieve that, I want to look like I'm flying, I want to look like I'm flowing, I want that disappears, and then you work backwards and work out how you can do that, which is a great way of doing it. You, you get the best case scenario, that's gonna vanish, and then you work backwards and, and see what can actually be possible um, with, with, with your knowledge, but, and, and that he calls a bottom-down approach. But, what he says there's a lot of there's a lot to be said in taking it the other way as well is actually looking at the moves and the met methodology and looking at what you can achieve with that and, and actually that that can spark sometimes a more creative uh ending because if you don't know what the ending is going to be but you can come to it through going i can do this with a deck of cards and make it look like that vanishes then you can come up with a more original ending because you're not starting with something that is all already been established uh, i hope that makes sense but but that really made me think because i think that's my preferred way of working is just experiment and play and see where we go rather than know where we go and experiment up to that point we can the sort of sky's the limit in a way if you if you look at it that way um, so I, I went, you know, that isn't spoiling anything. If you read that essay, you're going to get a lot more than that. But what I'm trying to get across is what I, you know, what I spoke about at the beginning is that why this book is so good. I have loads of amazing magic trick books on this shelf and stuff that just inspires me so much. And there's some things that have got amazing tricks, but aren't, aren't that well written. There's some things that really, there's some that are really well written that haven't got amazing tricks in. There's some... That I, that I can't really see what the trick's going to look like. Um, you know, with this book, you get this also the streaming video where most of the tricks or a lot of the tricks you can actually see what they look like. And when I talked about that, uh, this this inception sandwich trick, you know, when I saw it, I was like, right now I've got to learn that. You know, but but the visualization of it from the reading, not because the the, the writing was flawed. I couldn't really see the picture, and I think that that for some of us, you know, even though I'm a big book junkie sometimes it is really helpful just to see what that thing looks like and it also shows us that Harapan is actually performing this stuff and we know that by you know if you look at his Instagram account if you read his book reviews he's very well read he knows this stuff so you don't really think that he's not performing it but I know people and and again I'm not putting it down that will that will come up with tricks without even doing them because they're great ideas and write them without even experimenting with an audience and that's that's not criticizing that it's another way of doing it but but this stuff has a tried and tested feel and I think I'm going to get hours and hours of work out of this, and um, and uh, and I think you will too if you're into that sort of thing. Now it's not; it's sounding a bit gushy. This it's not for everybody. This is an advanced card book. I don't think it's as advanced as as it may seem on first look. It's I think a lot of this stuff is doable, and and I'm very cack. I, you know, when I learned card magic, I was very cack handed with a deck of cards. I wasn't great with a deck of cards at all. So, but now I. I I don't want to sound like a dick, but I'm but I'm proficient, and I can do some quite flourishy stuff. It didn't come naturally to me, so I think if there is stuff in here that you look at and go, oh, look, that you look at the pop out move and go, God, that looks really advanced. 
I think when you actually start playing with this stuff, it's not quite as advanced as you think. But there is a lot, you know, it's all double lift, triple lift, it's all sleight of hand, but mostly, but then you've got this gimmick stuff which allows you to to do, I mean, there's this Dr. Daly trick with a double faith that just looks like, whoa, you know, if you show that to a lay person, they're not going to be able to fathom what's going on there but they'll be get they'll be able to follow the plot which is very important um so there it is it's more of a discussion on principia i think that than a review there's been a lot of reviews um you know so we all know it's a good book now for most of us so so i hope that's given a bit of an insight into why it's a good book i i'm glad that people like harapan exist i'm, gl I'm glad that we do have the scientists sitting in the rooms doing the work that most of us haven't got the time and inclination to do because that's where our methods come from you know they don't really come from the people like me that go on stage and perform they come from the people that sit there and provide us with that with that nourishment really to go forward and entertain so so I'm re I will never take for granted the people that sit and do the work like that so um so I, so I love this um check it out it's um I'm no doubt it's going to be one of those books that go out of print again. It's been out of print once already, and th that's why it's a bestseller. So there is Principia uh, by Harapan Hong.